Hey everyone, my name is Jackson, and as you might already know, I am a percussionist. Over the past two or so years, I've been really interested in dabbling in music composition, specifically arranging for a battery percussion section. To do that, I've been using MuseScore with the MuseScore Drumline uh, plugin. That plugin's only been around for about a year now, and it really changed everything in MuseScore. Before, you really had to uh, put in a lot of customized um, notes and stuff in the music so people knew what you were trying to notate, but now it's just so much easier. So I figured since I've been getting a lot of questions on Instagram and stuff about how to use it, that I would do a video tutorial um, on MuseScore. First off, MuseScore is completely free. All you have to do is open a web browser and type in musescore.org. Once you do that, it'll take you to the home page of the website, and you can see that there's a green button that says free download. As soon as you click that, the free download will start, and you will be able to install MuseScore. Obviously, I already have it installed, so I don't need to worry about that. All right, so once you've downloaded MuseScore, you're going to want to open it up. And just one thing to note about MuseScore, uh, it will crash periodically. I mean, it is a free program. Um, it's not perfect, but um, make sure you're saving periodically. Actually, it happened the other day to me that um, I lost a good portion of a project I was working on just because I didn't save. So make sure you're saving frequently. Um, that way you don't lose any of your work. So, as you can see, once MuseScore opens, you're prompted with the Start Center, and basically, it allows you to create a new score or um, open up a previous score. So, for right now, I'm just going to close that up, just so I can show you how to download MuseScore Drumline. So, go to Help, and then the Resource Manager, and then that'll pop up, it'll show you two plugins for MuseScore. And as you can see, you'll be able to tell which one's MuseScore Drumline, and then you'll just click install, and you're good to go, right? It'll, it'll go through the process of installing, and then you can check back for updates periodically. Once you've downloaded MuseScore Drumline, uh, you can open up a new score um, by pressing command N, and it'll open up the new score wizard. And this will give you the option to put the title, subtitle, composer, and lyricist, and copyright, um, if you wanted to add those in to your composition. So for title, again, we're just gonna do um, uh, new score drumline, and there's not really a, a need for a composer right now. Um, and then what I typically do is I go to the choose instruments, and then I change this tab that says Common Dome Marching Band and go click the Marching Drumline Snare Line. Now the difference between the Marching Drumline Snare Line A and Marching Drumline Snare Line is that the Snare Line um, is on a five line staff and the Snare Line A is on a one line staff. Uh, personally, I prefer the five line staff because it makes it a little easier to notate things. Um, but again, it's all up to personal preference. Do what you want. Um, Again, I usually just skip through all this because you can change it uh, once you actually get to the score. So now that we're here, um, let's start with the most basic thing, note input. So all you do is click on a measure and click in, right? And then what you do is um, basically, if you want a normal uh, snare drum hit, just click A. Um, if you want a shot, click B. Um, if you want a rim, click E. If you want a ping shot, click D. Uh, if you want a stick shot, click D. And then if you want like a stick trick sound or like something like a back stick, click F, right? So those are the main things you'll end up using. Um, but there's also some other sounds that you do have to click on, such as like a rim knock or um, sticks in or um, a shell hit or a metronome, right? So those are things that you do have to click in manually. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a, a rundown of all the different types of um, notes you can put in, uh, or different types of note sounds, really. Uh, and then note value is controlled by this little thing up in the top left, right, uh, up by this bar. And you can click on the note, and this will obviously change the note value. So, you know, I can do things like that. Oh, what did I do? Uh, so I can do things like that, right? Um, you can also use your keyboard in order to uh, put those in shortcuts. So a, f uh, a one on the keyboard is a 64th note, a two is a 32nd note, 
the three is a sixteenth, the four is an eighth, and so on and so forth. Uh, you probably get the idea uh, with that. Um, so that's that's kind of the basics of note input and how to change your note value. You might be thinking, well, how do you do something like a triplet or uh, a tuplet or any any type of tuplet rather? So again, you go to in and you can do it two ways. Um, if you're trying to do a triplet, you can go uh, to add tuplets and then click a triplet, right? Um, that's kind of a long way to do it. You can really just click command three and it'll put in that uh, template. Um, so let me just do a little uh, demonstration here. So basically what I've done here is I put two triplets and then a five over three quintuplet, right? So if you're just reading through the music, it could be very easy, easy to um, look, skip over the fact that it's five over three, right? Um, and just assume it's five over two, so five notes and two beats. Um, so for, for some of these um, more odd uh, tuplets, um, you can change the format and go to style. Um, and then you go to tuplets, and then you can say number type and then a ratio. The problem with this is it shows the ratio for everything. So if you just have a triplet, it's three over two. That becomes a little cumbersome to the eye. It's just too heavy, um, and you don't want to have every ratio, right? So you might just want to have that five over three ratio. And I'm going to show you how to do that because this is something that it took me forever to figure out, and it was really obnoxious. Um, so obviously, you want to make sure that your tuplet says number, right? So you just get this. And then what you want to do is you actually, when you're creating something like a 5 over 3 tuplet, right, you want to um, obviously get a dotted quarter note because that is the the uh, note value, your five, five notes and a dotted quarter. Um, and then what you want to do is click add tuplets other uh, 5 over 3, assuming that's what you want, and then click ratio. So that way it shows you the ratio for only that tuplet. And so people might not get as confused when they're reading your writing um, because that is clearly spelled out. Next up is palettes. So as you can see, if you look to the left, um, you get all these options for articulation, tremolo, grace notes, beams, dynamics, lines, you know, all these different things. Um, let me just get out the main ones you'll probably end up using. Um, if you're to use Muniscore. Uh, so, as you can see, when you're working, um, that's interesting, Muniscore is glitching out on me right now. Okay, but um, as you can see, that is a lot to kind of scroll back and forth between. And so, Basically, what MuseScore lets you do is they allow you to make your own custom palette. And essentially, what I've done with this is I've put in um, all the main things I use. So to put it in the custom palette, it's as simple as just taking it and moving it over here. So now I have um, an accent in there. I already have that. But if I, say, wanted to add uh, a Mercado marking, I just drag it in there, right? So that's all in my custom palette. And these are things that I just use quite often. Um, and it just makes it a lot easier to uh, use the custom palette. What I want to do now is show you um, some things from the palette and just show you how they work. Um, so first off, you've got accents, right? And when you have accents on things like 16th notes that are close together in space, this will end up happening. They'll stack. So if you want eight accents on your 16th notes, that's what it'll look like. Probably not what you want. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go to format and go to style and then go 
to articulations and ornaments, and then articulation distance, put that down to 0 0.80, and then articulation size, put that down to 80%, and then voila, um, all your accents are spaced nicely, and there's not just a diagonal line of accents um, up from your notes. So next thing is tremolo. Um, so it's basically just adding in diddles. So if you want, you know, a 16th note diddles, all you gotta do is that. If you want triplet diddles, um, that's all you gotta do. Uh, pretty straightforward. And so yeah, that's, that's pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, and then you also can put in buzzes. So um, if you wanted to have this five over three, uh, be a buzz, then so that's kind of um, how to use that. And then there's also dynamics, right? So say you want this to start at forte, and by this point, you want it to get down to you want it to get down to piano. Uh, let me just put in an extra eighth note here. That all right? So by this point, you want to get it down to piano, right? If you just put this in, right, it's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna go anywhere. So basically what you do is you click um, the, the first note that the dynamic is not attached to, right? So the second note in the triplet, and then, so you click shift and select all those notes, and then put a decrescendo in there. So again, um, doesn't make a huge difference probably to what you all are hearing, but to what I'm hearing, it definitely, you can tell. Um, and then, you know, if you wanted to go back to Forte here, you know, you can hear the difference of that, hopefully. Um, let's see, uh, stickings, right? You want stickings, so uh, all you do is not that, all you do is Command L, and it'll basically give you lyrics or whatever. Um, and then you can type in your stickings. So you want a paradiddle here, and then maybe that. So maybe that's what you want your sticking to be. It's as simple as that, right? Uh, just select a note, Command L, and um, you know, there you go. Uh, pretty straightforward. So once you have gotten this done, uh, you want to export it, right? So as I mentioned before, make sure you're saving it um, as you work along. Um, but yeah, so once once you've got it saved, um, what you do, you go to File, and you go to Export. And basically, this will give you a bunch of different options. You can export it as audio, you can export it as a PDF, um, as a PNG. Um, there's, there's a ton of different options um, to export it. But you can also save it online. So if you have a MuseScore account, you can sign in to that. Um, I'm already signed in online. So once you click Save Online from the file, it'll prompt you to log in. And once you log in, um, then you're good to go. Right, so this way you can upload your score, um, and you want to click upload score audio. Um, but um, another thing that I forgot to show you, now that I'm thinking about it, if you shift and click all of these measures, and you don't want them to be there, you want them gone, just click command delete. If you just click delete, what'll happen is it'll delete um, the contents of the measure, but not the measure itself. So you have to click command delete to actually delete the measures. So as I was saying, um, it'll just prompt you with this. Once you click save online, you'll log in and then this will show up, upload score audio. And boom, it's uploaded. And then after it goes on there, you can edit this stuff. So Right now, I want it to be private because I'm not actually, um, this is not actually going to be on my MuseScore page or anything um, for people to see. <laughs> but um, yeah, so once you do that, you can just hop over 
to MuseCore. Um, so you can hop over to MuseCore. Um, you can go to your account. Um, for me, it's I hack on drums. Um, definitely, if you want some sheets to Crown 2018 or some of the licks I've written, um, check out my my profile and I hack on drums. But anyways, you get this, um, and you can you can obviously change it to the private uh, or change it to public or or whatever you'd like. Um, so yeah. That, that's kind of the, the basics of MuseScore, and as I'm talking here, I'm going to edit this score, right, so that you all um, can have these sheets to the Crown 2018 Closer. So now if you go to my MuseScore, Crown 2018 Closer is on there. Definitely check out my music score if you haven't already. Follow me there so you can keep up with clicks and cadences and things that I might end up posting in the future. And check out my Instagram at iHackOnDrums to follow me and uh, keep up to date with my practice and things like that. And if you wouldn't mind, hit the subscribe button down below because I have some content planned for 2020 that I'm really excited to share with you all. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I really hope this helped. Uh, your understanding of MuseScore and MuseScore Drumline, and I'll see you in 2020.